this is not a right angled triangle, at least not in its current form. Right? I have a difference here, not a sum. Okay? In order to make it clear what's going on here, I just need to adjust it ever so slightly. Okay? Now I have a right angled triangle. I can form a right angled triangle kind of like this one. It won't be like this because I'm not in a circle anymore. But I can form a right angled triangle where the sides behave like this. They give me this Pythagorean theorem in this particular arrangement. Okay. So draw with me a right angle triangle. Just a simple one, like this one. Okay. Now, because I've got x squared on the left, right, and then I've got one, one squared, and y squared on the right. Okay. What that means is, in our fictional right angle triangle x squared, or x, is which side? <coughs> which side is it? According to Pythagoras. <coughs> it's the hypotenuse, is it not? It's the biggest side, and these two are the, the sums of the, small, the squares of the small sides. Okay? So that means x is over here, and then in some arbitrary sense, that means I'm going to have a 1 and a y on the other two sides. Okay? Now our next step is a bit arbitrary, right? But we've done this as mathematicians just so we have a bit of consistency, and the math does end up being slightly simpler. If I put theta up here, I really could put theta in either spot, it doesn't matter. If I put theta up there, I can get some relationships, some trig relationships out of this, just like I got out of that right angle triangle, right? What relationships are I going there? Cos theta equals 1 on x. Okay, so I can say cos theta equals 1 on x, but I'm trying to head towards parametric equations, right? I'm trying to head to x and y equals. Yeah. So I need to take reciprocals here, do you see that? Right? So really I would say x equals sec theta, agree? So that's good. So now I've got a, um, a relationship I can put into here. How about y? What would be a handy thing to get a relationship with trig with y? I probably want to relate it to one, right? I, I don't want to mix it in with the x. The whole point of parametric equations is to separate x and y out, right? So I want to relate these two, and the ratio I would choose is opposite or adjacent, which is tan, right? So I would say tan theta equals opposite on adjacent, right? Does that make sense? So y is just tan theta. Does this make sense? Yeah. Now you have a look at this. Is this going to check out sec theta and tan theta? Is it going to check out here? And the answer is absolutely, because sec squared minus tan squared is equal to 1. Which is brilliant. Okay, just like we saw before with this one, the simpler version. Okay? All I need to do to get it over here is to say, well, I need to scale it by this amount for x. I need to scale it by that amount for y. Does that make sense? So I'm going to have a sec theta and b tan theta as my parametric equations. Okay? Now, one last little piece. Okay? There's a bit of a problem when we look at the domain for theta. Because remember we said theta can't just be anything you like. Right? <coughs> now this, in theory it could work. But really it's kind of a poor choice when you have a look at the function that you're dealing with. Okay? Because when I've got sec theta and tan theta, like, where do you want them to exist? Right? Think about this. What, does the graph of, what do the graphs of sec theta and tan theta look like, for instance? Where's sec theta? Like the, the You know, this way. Here's, um, here's cos, right? So you can see, up until here, it exists, right? So you're like, okay, at that point, I'm going to get a vertical asymptote. So when I draw in sec theta, it's going to look like this and like uh, this, right? Do you agree? I Wait, can keep going, no, I suppose. No. Sorry, so no, it sorry. From down the here. Bottom. Down here, like that. Okay, like so. Is that okay? Now you have a look at this, right? Now this is okay, but it's a little bit messy because now I've got like parts that overlap, like not to 2 pi, it's a bit gross. Okay? So therefore, again, by convention, and to try and deal with the different kind of symmetry that the hyperbola has, rather than going around in a circle, like it makes sense for a circle or an ellipse, instead we say, well, let's start from here, deal with the positive side up here, the first and second quadrants, and let's deal with the third and fourth quadrants separately. Right? So we go from naught to pi, and we also go from naught to negative pi. So I guess doing that in order, we would say it as negative pi less than or equal to theta, which is less than or equal to pi. Okay? Now again, in theory, they could have, and I've got some discontinuities in there, um, pi on 2 and negative pi on 2, like this guy and this guy, but you cannot avoid the discontinuity. There are always going to be discontinuities on a shape like the hyperbola. Okay? Now, um, why do we use these? What was the point of like, why does this seem complicated as compared to this? Okay? 
And the idea is that, for instance, um, if you have a look at our shape here, right, there are going to be a whole bunch of points that behave in concert together. I'll give you a very simple uh, example. Okay? There's a whole bunch of pairs of points on the hyperbola where I could say, as an example, um, the tangents are going to be parallel. So for instance, uh, we talked about this before, this is the reason why gradient is a poor choice of parameter here, right? But pick a, uh, a line there, like so, that might be the tangent, and then it's going to have a corresponding one somewhere over here, like so. So they look pretty parallel, don't they? Okay. Now, they're not the only ones, there's an infinite set of other points that will still do this parallel thing and I can keep on moving. Now the key is, if I want to move around and understand how these two points relate to each other, an angle makes perfect sense to make a comparison between these two. I mean, in this example, can you kind of see what's the difference between the angles? Can you kind of see? Look, if I do the, if the from the origin, if I go up to here, you have a look at that angle, right? And then if I go over to here to the other point, you have a look at that angle. What's the relationship? They're they are supplementary, aren't they? Okay. So just in one fell swoop, we can see a clear algebraic relationship between those two. And it's very obvious to see, provided you have a parameter to talk about it with. Right? Now, the downside is the algebra ends up being substantially worse. Um, for example, I'll, I will come around and show you in a minute. Um, do you remember there was this, there was this question, right? To prove that um, from one focus to another, that that distance there always is 2a. Do you remember that question? Yeah. Now, there's a hard way to do it, and there's an easy way. Algebraically, the hard way is with parameters. It's like 10 lines of hard algebra. A much more beautiful way would be like this, watch. So you've got a, um, a directrix over here, and you will also have a directrix over here, agree? Now, I've got here, say for instance, I guess uh, that would be S and S dash, so you've got P, S, and P, S dash. Do you agree with that? But by definition, because in all conic sections, you have this relationship, right? Like that's the relationship that makes it work. And you put different values for E, you get different conics. Therefore, like where are these guys on this diagram? Okay. Well, if this is P, S dash. P, D dash is over here, right? This is the corresponding directrix. And then P, D, just regular P, D, is going to be over here. Do you agree with that? But hold on a second. What are the equations of these two lines? The directrices, right? This is x equals negative a on e, and x equals a on e, right? So what is this total distance? It's, um, there's an a on e, and there's another a on e. So therefore, that total distance, pd plus pd dash, equals 2a on e. I don't want pd on pd dash. I want ps plus ps dash, right? The difference between those two is a factor of e. So if you put an e outside there, you get rid of that e. And look, that there is ps plus ps dash. Now that's a beautiful, elegant, and simple proof, right? If you go this path, it's like I said, it's, um, uh, it's gross. And that's as good as it gets, OK? So you can see, you have to be a bit cluey about this. You don't just use these blindly. You have to know the times where it's, and this comes to practice, where it makes so much more sense to go to the parameter versus when you don't go to the parameter, right? So in conics in general, you just have so many paths to answer a question, and you have to know which one's most efficient, and that comes with time.